Alice in Wonderland. Have you heard of Wonderland? That's where Alice went one warm, sunny afternoon. She was feeling very sleepy, sitting on the grass reading a book, when suddenly she saw a white rabbit running by. Nothing unusual in that, you might think, but this rabbit was different. He was wearing a waistcoat and carrying a pocket watch, muttering, I'm late, I'm late, oh dear, I'm very late. This is curious, thought Alice, and she decided to follow him. The white rabbit jumped down a large hole, and a moment later, down, 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 fell Alice, landing with a thump at the bottom. Alice found herself in a long, low hall, with lots of doors, and though she tried to open them, they were all locked. She saw the white rabbit running along, muttering. Oh, my ears and whiskers, how late it's getting. On a glass table, Alice could see a tiny key. Then she found a little door, and to her delight, the tiny key unlocked the door. Peering through, Alice saw the most beautiful garden. Oh, I must visit the beautiful garden, exclaimed Alice. But I'm much too big to get through this door. If only I was smaller. She glanced at the table. This time it had a small bottle on it, with the words, Drink Me, written on a label. The bottle wasn't marked poison, so Alice drank it. Mmm, delicious she said. It tastes of cherry tart and custard. Mmm. And pineapple. And hot buttered toast all mixed up. Alice started to get smaller and smaller until she was just the right size to get through the little door. But she'd left the key on the table and now she was too small to reach it. On the floor was a pretty box. Alice opened it, and inside was a cake with the words, Eat me, on it. So Alice took a bite. Soon she was more than nine feet tall, much too big to get through the little door. She sat down and began to cry <laughs> great pools of tears. After a while, the white rabbit returned carrying a pair of gloves. When he saw Alice, he screamed, dropped his gloves and scuttled off. She picked the gloves up and immediately grew smaller again. She was so small that she slipped and fell into her own pool of tears. Alice heard a splashing sound, then a mouse paddled up to her. Good day, Mr. Mouse, said Alice. Good day, replied the mouse. Good day? I've never had a worse one. I was simply walking about when, splash, here I am. Alice and the mouse swam to the shore. Many animals followed them. First a lizard, then a duck and then a most peculiar looking creature. Who are you? said Alice. A dodo, of course, replied the creature. But dodos are extinct. At least I thought they were, said Alice. Well, they're not, are they? said the dodo. I'm here. Let's have a caucus race to get dry. Ready? Steady! Go! Alice ran off until she came to a house with a sign saying W. Rabbit, Esquire. She went inside and found the gloves and was just about to leave when she noticed a strange green bottle. 
Alice uncorked her bottle and took a sip. Mmm, delicious, she said. Then started to grow and grow until she was so big that one foot was pushed up the chimney and one arm out of the window. She moaned. This house is definitely a few sizes too small for me. After a long time, Alice heard some chattering outside the house. Fetch a ladder, Bill, and get her out, shouted the white rabbit. What, me? replied Bill the lizard. Oh, I'm too old. But he put a ladder against the house and climbed up to the chimney. Out you go, cried Bill, jumping up and down on Alice's foot. This tickled Alice, so she gave a sharp kick. Bill went flying through the air, landing bump on the ground. We'll have to try something else, said the white rabbit. Let's throw pebbles. That should get her out. Bill and the white rabbit started to throw pebbles through the windows of the house. As the pebbles landed, they turned into little cakes. Curious, said Alice. I'll eat one. That might help. So she ate one. Alice grew smaller and smaller and smaller until she was small enough to run out of the house. She went into a wood, where the trees and flowers seemed enormous. I must find the beautiful garden, she said. Alice walked on until she came across a fish footman. Excuse me, miss, he said, handing Alice an envelope. An invitation from the Queen for the Duchess to play croquet. Give it to the Duchess. She lives in that house, he said, gesturing ahead. approached the house and went inside. There was a lot of crying and sneezing going on. The Duchess was sitting in the room nursing what looked like a baby, while the cook was grinding pepper into a pot. On the hearth, a large cat was sitting, grinning from ear to ear. What do you want? demanded the Duchess, throwing the baby to Alice. Alice gave the Duchess the Queen's invitation. Why is that cat grinning? asked Alice, looking at the cat. It's a Cheshire cat. Pig! shouted the Duchess. Alice glanced down at the baby in her arms and realised that it was, indeed, a pig. Meanwhile, the cook was busy grinding even more pepper into the pot. By now, everyone, except the cook and the cat, was sneezing. The Duchess grabbed the baby from Alice, rocked it in her arms, and sang a lullaby. Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. Achoo! He only does it for an oil because he knows it teases. The 
Duchess then threw the baby back to Alice, saying, You keep the baby. I must dress for croquet. Alice went over to the Cheshire Cat. Cheshire Puss, she said, could you tell me how to get to the beautiful garden? <laughs> replied the cat. It doesn't matter which way you go. In one direction lives a hatter, and in the other direction lives a March Hare. They're both mad. You know, we all are here. While the cat was talking, he kept appearing and vanishing, but his grin remained. Next, Alice found herself in the beautiful garden. She watched three playing cards dressed as gardeners, painting white roses red. Why are you painting the roses? asked Alice. We planted white roses by mistake, said a gardener. If the Queen finds out, it's off with our heads. Suddenly, there was a trumpet fanfare. The cards all stood to attention as the Queen of Hearts arrived, followed by a meek-looking king. Then came members of the royal household, the white rabbit and other animals. Who is this? demanded the queen, staring at Alice. My name is Alice, um, your majesty, replied Alice. You can drawing me for croquet, said the queen. They played croquet with hedgehogs as balls and flamingos as mallets. The white rabbit whispered to Alice, Whatever you do, don't beat the queen or it's off with your head. Alice decided not to risk losing her head, so she let the queen win. After a while, the knave of hearts brought around a platter of tarts and offered them to everyone. They all refused, except Alice, who was feeling very hungry, and ate too. Just then, the Cheshire Cat appeared. He said, follow me. Alice followed the Cheshire Cat until they came upon the mock turtle, sitting sad and lonely on the shore, sobbing. <laughs> Oh dear, oh me, shouted the Mock Turtle. I'm a Mock Turtle, I'm so unhappy. Why do they call you a Mock Turtle, asked Alice. Because, sobbed the Mock Turtle, because I'm not a... Real turtle. Once, sobbed the mock turtle, I was a real turtle. When I was little, I went to school in the sea. The teacher was an old turtle. We used to call him Tortoise. Because he Tortoise. The mock turtle sighed and began to sing in a voice choked with sobs. <laughs> Beautiful soup, so rich and green, waiting in a hot tureen. Oh, for such a day, tis worn not stoop, soup of the evening, beautiful soup, beautiful soup, soup of the evening, beautiful, beautiful soup. <coughs> 
The Mock Turtle was just about to sing another chorus when a cry of, The trial's beginning! was heard in the distance. Alice followed the Mock Turtle to the courtroom where the King and Queen of Hearts were seated with a great crowd assembled around them. The King was the judge and there were 12 animals sitting in the jury box. The White Rabbit unrolled a parchment scroll and read the following. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts all on a summer day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them quite away. Off with his head, cried the Queen. Not yet, dear, replied the king. Bring in the evidence. A playing card brought in a platter of tarts, with two missing. Excuse me, called Alice. I ate the tarts. Off with her head, shouted the queen. Off with her head. Suddenly Alice started to grow bigger and bigger and bigger until her head was touching the roof of the courtroom. Who cares about you? shouted Alice above the din. You're nothing but a pack of cards. At these words, the cards rose up in the air and came flying down around Alice. Alice woke up with a start. She was lying on the grass, not far from where she lived. The sun was still shining, and Wonderland was only a dream.